Hello fellow survivors, here we are back in Angler's Den and it's time to go to the gold mine. We're on day 17, so we're getting there. Just uh, 483 days to go. Alright, so we're going to go to the gold mine, but first we're going to loot in here. We haven't actually looted in here. There should be matches. I believe they're over here by this pot. They are not. If not, they can be over here, and they are. So here's matches. Uh, these are always here. They may not be exactly here. They can be somewhere else in here, but there'll always be matches in, in here in the Angler's Den. And this is definitely going to be our regional base, so I'm happy to leave some stuff behind here as well. Uh, let's just look around first, though, to loot this area. Do you see a book here? No, not today. And you can also find arrowheads in here. Hope nobody yeah. this anymore. Two arrowheads. One of the few places we can find it. And if you have eagle eye vision, you might notice that. Boom! There's more matches right here. <laughs> so you can find two matches in here sometimes. No way, though, but sometimes you get two matches. That's cool. Cloth. Oh, I just did this. Yeah. Uh, what else? We got some wood. Check this pan also. Uh, dirty page. Dog food. Sardines. Ah, here's the book. Shooting guide. Which we don't need. I think that's it. Yeah, okay. Nice. Well, there's some stuff we don't need, so we're going to leave some stuff behind. We're going to leave this behind and that. Uh, 12 matches. We will leave the tablets as well. And antibiotics, they're about to expire. Um, I think we will take them with us. Move what we don't need in here. This will be using. Uh, this we can put in there. Arrowheads, uh... Yeah, they can... They can stay here. We can maybe use them for arrow crafting at a later date. Uh, put one of, one of these in, down in there. And the scrap metal can stay here too. And one of the cloths. The rest we'll take with us, I think. And then we'll have a bit of mousse. And a drink. A little bit heavy, but not, not too bad. Okay, it sounds bad out there, but I don't think it's a blizzard, so I think we'll be all right. Now, before I do anything, regional bases. We have Ash Canyon, which is Anglers. Uh, and in here, there isn't really much. It's just misc. Uh, but we also have, you can see, Angler. And there's 12. It's uh, easy for me to keep track. Basically, the way I do it is I keep a pack of matches in every base, just for contingency. In my old one, I always had, uh, every base had four matches. Because in the late game, you can get by with using a match every 30 days or so. You only really use a match in an emergency, in a blizzard, or if you uh, killed an animal, uh, like a moose or something, and it's too windy or whatever, and bad weather, you sometimes use a match for that. Um, but I'm going to uh, put 12 in and I'm basically going to track all the matches so I have a counter. So matches I'm going to track in this uh, log. Uh, the other, and I'll track things like the hammers and things, you know, and major loot in bases. But the other stuff, the misc things, not so important. Uh, but that is important. Okay. And then later, as we get to the late base and we establish more regional bases and have bases all over the place, then I might start tracking how many saplings are left, um, how many matches are left, and how many arrowheads are left, and some other stuff. But at the moment, it's really just matches that matter. Okay, let's see what it's like outside. Okay, that's fine. It's a clear day, actually. We can actually light a fire. But it's windy. We have enough food, I would say. Might pick up some cattails on the way. I'm not sure I needed to bring this stuff, but we'll do it anyway. Uh, and what we're going to do now, we're going to go to the gold mine. It doesn't matter too much if we get heavy uh, on the way, because we'll get the backpack anyway. So, um, it'll be fine. Uh, here is the uh, river by Anglistan. We came down from over there. 
It came down from there. And went down. You can also go this way. Into a wolf nest. With a rope up. Or these two. To get eventually back to the cave that we came from. To Tim Wolf Mountain. Over here on my right. Uh, here in here. That's the summoning circle. If you play Dark Walker. It's not here now obviously. But what we want to go is up this slope. Towards this waterfall. Because through this waterfall. And the river up there. You'll find a cave that leads up to Minus Folly. There's a rope that we need to climb. But other than that there's no climbing. And here there should be some tomato soup. There's a fire barrel here in the open. And then there's a soup right here. And I might make a fire in a minute. If the wind chill isn't too strong. Let's have a look. How, we, how much wind is there right now? Minus 14. Uh, I think we probably can make a fire. We'll wait until we... Those are high up. Who are those crows? Look at that. Uh, until we climb here though. Because there are wolves up ahead. Uh, there can be up to five wolves there. And you need to get past them. So... Having a... Um, a torch, it helps. Nothing. There's a backpack. Let's climb up here. Ashcan is a fantastic area. A lot of people hate it because it's too, too many levels and things. I think it's a very clever design. It's really fun. Once you learn it, you learn that it's actually fairly linear. This is a few places that have multiple areas that you can uh, use, uh, or routes that you can use. But for the most part, it's pretty easy. We're going to light a fire. We use the book to lighten our load. I could hear that there was a wolf up there. I could hear a howl. So we need to get through those wolves. I mean, I could kill them, but... Especially this early in the game, if I kill a wolf, I'm going to probably harvest it anyway. Because I want the hides and I want to cook the meat. Uh, so if I do kill a wolf, I might as well just um, harvest it. These are heavy, but we're going to put, uh, we'll put this one on. And then we'll grab a torch. That's a good torch. Hey, fire starting level 2. Nice. Oh, good torches. Very nice. Bad torch. I'll use this one. And good torch. Could also heat up a drink, but it's not really that important. It's only, well, out there it's minus 11. In shelter it's minus 3. Should be right. Save the cattails for later, if you need them at all. So up here, there can be wolves above this waterfall. And I'm pretty sure there are wolves, because I heard some howls. I do carry a bit of meat on me, so it's likely that they come for me. They're pretty easy to scare off, but this area right here is a little bit dangerous. Because here, there's not much space between me and the wolf. I can hear the bark. Uh, there's not much space between me and the wolf, so... Uh, it's a little bit more dangerous. So try to give uh, as much distance as possible. Exactly for this reason, see? It's also... Uh, yeah, well, you, you have a good time, Wolfie. Because the torch will protect you from the wolves. But only temporarily. You have When a wolf charges you, when you have a torch up, it will eventually stop. And then you have maybe five seconds to react. To either shoot the wolf or scare it off. But if they are too close... So that was fine. But if they are too close, if they approach... If they, go away. Yeah. They can get scared of you dropping the torch as well. You can also run towards the wolves, but... 
A lot of water. Just keep doing this. Don't try to be creative or, you know, clever. Just uh, drop the torch and aim at the wolf. Okay? Just do that. Rinse and repeat. If they, if they are too close when they detect you, they can attack you through the torch. So this wolf, for example, is pretty far away. Oh, this takes... I recommend not using the bow for this. Because it takes too long. Use the stress pistol. Uh, but say I'm walking up here and then a wolf right now, boom, comes around the corner. Then he will attack me, torch or no torch, because he's too close. He's basically already passed the torch barrier by the time I'm detected. So when you are in places like this, try to give yourself as much of a berth as possible. But if a wolf does spot you, it's far enough away. Otherwise, you can get attacked through a torch. Think of the torch as having an invisible barrier, an aura around you, and that aura creates a little barrier that the wolves cannot cross. However, if the wolf detects, detects you when it's already inside the barrier, then it's going to attack you anyway. And then you have to be fast. And I do recommend uh, to scare off the wolves, use either the distress pistol or a stone. So like you do, you select a stone like this, and then you just aim, right? Or you select the stress pistol, and you aim. It's pretty fast. However, if you select the bow, it takes a bit longer. You gotta get the bow out, put an arrow on, and then you can aim. Now, and if you click two by default, it brings up the bow. So the bow, you shouldn't use the bow to scare away the wolves, unless you suspect maybe if you that you might have to kill the wolf. Maybe then maybe you can do it. Okay. Here's the cave to Ash Canyon, uh, to upper levels. Here's our waterfall. We're going to drag the torch through the waterfall like we did in Hushra Valley. Going to take everything off first, just like before. This might feel like an exploit, but it makes kind of sense, right? Like you... Um, you uh, you know that it's going to uh, get wet, so you pack it away. And then we're going to use... So that's not an exploit, but this is. This is an exploit. We're going to move this through the waterfall blindly in the dark. Put it somewhere where I can pick up. Right here. And then we took the torch through. And now the torch is still burning, even though we just walked through a waterfall. <laughs> Which is totally an exploit, by the way. Uh, doesn't make any sense. So use that trick if you want to. Or don't. You choose. Uh, by the way, every fire that you carry will get wet through this. Except for marine flares. If you light a marine flare and walk through a waterfall, it will not douse. I mean, that's why it's called marine flare. Uh, so if you have a marine flare burning, uh, that will take you through. So what you could do, for example, if a wolf is attacking you outside where we just were, you, c you could light a marine flare, scare off the wolf, run into this cave, go through the waterfall, and then use the flare to light a fire. And then you grab a torch from that fire. So that's something you could do. And then that would be, you know, pretty realistic, wouldn't it? But yeah. You do, uh, do whatever you, you fancy there. But it's just a tip. There we are. Now we're warming back up. Let's have a look around here for some hidden loot or something. There's going to be coal here, but uh, we have to climb a rope. Granted, it's a small rope, but nevertheless a rope. So once we get heavy, we're going to drop some stuff. In this, this series, I'm aiming to survive 500 days. And it's going to take a long time. It's going to be a long run and... I'm glad that you're watching this with me, and thank you so much for doing that. The way I'm playing the game, because this is my main run, and therefore Sax run, is I'm going to play the game the way I play it. And I play certain things in, you know, in a certain way. Uh, I use some exploits, I avoid other exploits, uh, I have certain tactics that work a certain way, and I might play it differently from you, or from other streamers. Ultimately, you have to decide yourself how you play it. However, I will nevertheless explain everything I'm doing. So if I use an exploit or don't use an exploit or 
uh, do something that I'm not sure if I've shown before, or maybe I've shown before. I will try to explain everything I'm doing all the time, generally speaking, because then you're not just with me for this journey, you're also along for an educational ride. So it's important for me that if you take the time to watch me do this, I might as well inform you as best as I can, and then hopefully you'll learn something. Or maybe you already know all of this stuff. Well, this stuff and you just long for the ride, which of course is fine too. Or maybe you're using these videos to fall asleep. You have the playlist on auto. <laughs> Some people do that, and that's fine. Um, okay, so we need to climb this rope. We're a bit too heavy. And we're going to drop some stuff to lighten the load. We'll drop this for sure. We have too many coal as well. Let's drop like... Not this much. Yeah. Now we'll light a torch. Not that one. This one. And we can actually climb now. Uh, with the torch. In the past, you couldn't do this. In fact, uh, I have a guide on Timberwolf Mountain. Um, I have interloper spawn guides on my channel. And some of you may have watched them. Uh, you may have watched my tutorials on how to navigate Timwolf Mountain and also Ash Canyon. And in both of those videos, um, this mechanic is not in the game. So you can't climb ropes with the torch. And I instead throw the torch all over the place and this and that. You don't need to do that anymore. You can just climb with it. If it's a storm lantern, the character will douse it. If it's a flare or a torch, uh, they probably put it in their backpack or something. There's a wolf carcass, one of the found wolf carcasses in the game. We don't really need it though. Um, and we're, the weather's are right outside, so I'm just going to keep going. I don't really need anything from it. The hide will be okay, but I got a torch burning. The weather outside is all right. I'd rather just keep moving. The, the carcass is not going to go away. If I interact with it and start taking stuff from it, it will start decaying and next time it will be gone. So instead I'm just going to leave it. If I really needed a wolf coat, then I might grab it. And there are actually enough wolf carcasses around in the world for you to be able to make a wolf coat without killing any wolves. It can be done. Uh, some of them are by chance, like that one is chance. There can be a wolf carcass there, there can be a normal corpse there. It varies, but you can find, uh, including Forsaken Airfield, I think they added one there or two. Yeah, they did add one there. So I think you can find up to, I think it's up to six carcasses, wolf carcasses in the long dark. So you can make one wolf coat. I don't think you can make two. Over there is Miner's Folly and Boris the Bear is blocking me. But we're not going to go there. We don't, we don't need to go there. We've got to go to the mine. Uh, sometimes on this bridge, you'll find a rope laying about. And if you do, uh, you can pick up that rope, it's very heavy. But if you have the space for it, you might as well pick it up. You don't need the rope, but when you get to the gold mine, you have to attach a rope anchor. And if you don't have a rope, you have to either billy go down, which I'm going to do, or you have to steal a rope from another rope anchor. So if you see a rope, you might as well take it with you. If the rope isn't there, it's likely to be in a cave further up. Here we have a little rabbits then. Uh, I tend to take these and then cure them. However, uh, that presumes that I'm going to go back to Angler's Den with them and leave them in Angler's Den. So I'm not going to take these because after I'm done with the gold mine, I am going to go straight back to Tim Wolf Mountain. I'm not going to go back to the uh, Angler's Den. There's a campfire. There's usually chocolate or something here. No? No chocolate? Disappointing. Okay. There can also be a snow shelter here. So there's uh, different things you can find here. And you got rabbits, and you got maple and birch. But I'm going to come back and grab these another time. I'm going to go to the gold mine again in this run for sure. Because also I have to go to Miner's Folly and things. So I'm not worried about that. I will come back here and pick up these saplings. And then take them to Angler's Den. Now here on these bridges, you can play close attention because there can be matches laying about. They can be under the bridges or on the bridges. Now on Interloper, those matches are really rare. I've only found them once. 
but on lower difficulties, you can find a lot of them. I've found three packs of matches on the same bridge once. They are all over the place, but an interloper usually won't find them. These bridges seem really scary. Ah, there they are, look, matches. It's laying in the snow. This is the, only the second time I've ever found this. But I think also maybe uh, with the loot changes they have uh, added a higher chance of finding them. These wobbly bridges seem really scary and they are really well designed. But it takes a lot to fall out of them. I don't think I've actually ever seen anyone fall out of those bridges by accident. It tends to be people doing a dare, see if it can be done by sprinting or, or holding left or, or whatever. You can fi fall out of them. Technically you can climb on top of them and then fall down. But there are holes in the, in the, in the rope and you can fall through those. But you're unlikely to do so just walking. Uh, you're going to kind of have to go through the hole for that to happen. Here we have uh, presumably a deer carcass. No, this, these are, no, these are the crows. See where we are? It might be hard to recognize. But see right there? Um, don't fall down now, please. Thank you. See right there? That is Angler's Den. And we walked this way. And we came up here. And what's, what's down here? Remember I said, like, wow, these crows are high up. And that was for that corpse that we looted. That's what that was. We're gonna keep going. Here there's more maple, we're not gonna pick that up either, because I don't really fancy taking them home to Anglis Den or anything. Look at look at Ash Canyon, I mean this region is just phenomenal, I really like it. Because look at how much stuff there is, look at this. Right? Uh, you can even see things from here, like the different levels. Like in fact it's a little bit hidden, but you can kind of see it. See so over there? Cabin right there. That's Foreman's retreat. This is the uh, high meadows right here. Climber's cave. There's the wolf plateau. See this area here? <clears throat> That's the inaccessible wolf plateau I talked about before. And then down here is Angler's Den. Uh, over here is like there can be moose. There's just so much stuff here. Such a great area. So much to explore. This, this is an area that really, really encourages exploration. Okay. Another thing about these upper levels here, where we are now, actually warm, right? <clears throat> is that you're perfectly safe here from predators. Uh, as of this recording, at least, there are no predators on the upper levels. So, for example, where I am now, except for one, there is a bear. Uh, we've already gone past it. It's by minus folly. There's a bear there. So you're perfectly safe walking around there. You'll only really find rabbits. And that's about it. Maybe the odd deer. And then you have that bear down there. You won't find wolves. They might change that in the future though. So pay attention. In case there's a wolf or something. I doubt there's going to be wolves there though. Because the danger with this particular journey. All the way to uh, the gold mine. Is, is meant to be the terrain and the distance. You know now we have very clear weather. Nice weather. Oh. <laughs> Uh, and it's kind of like a bit more relaxing and it's not too cold but it can be uh, cold it can be windy blizzard you know and it's quite a long journey as well it's linear you can't really take a wrong turn it seems confusing but you can't really take a wrong turn in in this route to the gold mine it, it only goes one way once you pass minus folly unless you go into that cave we came out of you there's only one route to take there might be some hidden corners here and there, but you cannot take a wrong turn. You'll always end up at the gold mine. Um, and I think that's meant to be the danger of this. That's meant to be the route, you know? Uh, and therefore adding wolves will be a bit odd. I suppose they could though. Or maybe they add a cougar to this area. Maybe when you watch, if you were watching this, maybe by now they have added the cougar already <laughs> and there is a cougar in this area. If so, you gotta have your bow ready and then you can if I get everything I just said about this being safe. Who knows? There's Wolf Draw Overlook. Um, and this is a Polaroid location. Very tempting to map here. Uh, if you're high high up, you map more. 
but uh, this is a Vista location if you have if you find a Polaroid so we will do it later instead uh, has a rope anchor uh, has that bridge I talked about before or what leads to a rope anchor over there you can actually see the rope anchor right there you need to attach a rope and this is the wolf plateau this whole area here inaccessible you could only access it up here before this little slope here with a campfire trick can't be done anymore so this is all history now anyway onwards we go there's lots to say about this area you can hear wolf howls and they sound scary and they sound like they're not that far away we're heavy but don't worry you can still climb these even if you're heavy uh, the wolf howls are below us they are not here for now at least uh, so you don't have to worry about that just because you hear wolf howls doesn't mean that they are here now we're coming up to the area that can have the bear coat so there's a little uh, kind of like an alcove a little hidden area a little nook that can have loot there can be a bear coat there can be rope there can be a storm lantern there can be uh, books and it's very easy to miss because it's right here you walk past these trees and then it looks like you're going straight ahead like I said, you can't really take a wrong turn, so you just keep going. But actually, it's behind you now when you get here. You turn around, and it's right there. See? Here it is. This little area here can I miss glue. So here's the rope that I talked about. We might as well attach it, seeing as we're here. We have a cookbook. We have a lantern, which is great. Hardly anything in it, though. And the rope. And we don't need the rope, but I'm going to attach it anyway. And in this part here, this is actually a cave. You notice I'm slowing down and warming up. So this is actually a cave. You'll be safe. If you put a fire here, even if a blizzard hits and it's going right in your face, that fire shouldn't burn out. There are two such locations in Ash Canyon where it looks really open. Like right here, it looks like the wind can just blow straight through it. There's one other place near where we came to Ash Canyon. And uh, that one, the fire will never blow out even if it hits the fire here uh, behind this sign here and to the left here there can be a corpse and that corpse can have one of the special item variants the uh the rifle i think it's a curator's rifle i'm not sure but they won't be here on interloper of course they'll be there on stalker and below and then over here you see there's a lot to say in ash canyon over here there used to be a stem hidden in the snow you come to this corner and then you turn left and then the stim would be right here uh, but they removed that and the stim is now as far as we know in the first aid kit in minus folly instead okay we're kind of shifting between cold and warm here um but that's okay and we might make a fire by the rope anchor just to get some more torches we used our uh, our mega torch uh, that's the official name of this now, by the way. <laughs> when you have big torches like that. That's not a term I came up with, by the way. Uh, this is something I adopted. There's a lot of great streamers on Twitch that play the long dark. One of them is called DH Dunn, who is an author. And when he has a big torch that's full, he calls it Mega Torch. And uh, I never had a name for them. I just called them Big Torches, so... Now the mega torches. Now you know. <laughs> now all I can think about is well drank. Anyway, uh, here we are at the gold mine. This is the only place you can get lost. So so far from the cave that led us all the way here, it's pretty linear. But here, if you haven't been here before, and Maybe it's foggy or bad weather. You can miss it because the gold mine now is down here. There's the gold mine right there. And if it's foggy and you come here and you don't realize what's going on, you could walk past this and then you end up with some ropes over there. And those ropes climb down, and but they actually take you out of the gold mine. And you don't want that. You want here. Uh, so this place is the only place you can actually get lost. We're going to make a fire here. Uh, to warm up a little bit while we attach this rope anchor. I'm going to show you how to get down without the rope anchor though, but uh, we might as well attach it. It's what the ropes are for. 
We're gonna find more coal in there. Perfect. So let's, let's put two of these on. I mean, it's all right. Ah, yeah. Let's grab a couple of torches, like two or three, good ones only. That's acceptable. That's rubbish. Ah, oh, yeah. That's also rubbish. I'm gonna try and get it in those things. Oh, so close. That's okay. Okay, then we're gonna attach the rope anchor here. This is a rope anchor. They all look the same, but this one's a bit more obscure because it's gonna integrate into these rocks. But we're gonna attach a rope here. This takes, I think, I believe this takes 15 minutes. There we go. We might as well map while we're here as well. Warm up a bit. The weather's getting worse. There we go. But not quite awful yet. We might as well, seeing as we're standing here and we are heavy and thirsty and everything, have a drink as well. There we go. Time of day. All right. So now you could just climb down. So the rope is now attached. You could uh, just uh, pick, uh, interact with the rope and you'll climb down. It's a long rope, but you don't, it's not too difficult climbing down a rope. It's going up, really, that's the issue. And you climb down it, and then down here it's just some rabbits and stuff, so you're fine, unless they add a warfare. I wouldn't be too surprised if they add a predator here, if I'm honest. So be careful in the future, if you're watching this later. I think they'll add something here. So that's one way to do it. But I'm going to show you how to get down without the rope, because it might be that you're here and you didn't find the rope, or you forgot it, or you couldn't be bothered to carry it or you don't have the time to put the anchor down because you're in a blizzard or whatever. So we're going to do it the other way. In that case, you just go here. Uh, alternatively, you can go to some ropes that are further up ahead. If you just continue down this path, you see there is a, uh, a path down there. You eventually get to rope anchor and you can grab that rope, take it off and put it on the rope anchor where we just were could do that but the only issue with doing that is th is you then take away the other route up to the gold mine uh you could do that but you you kind of making it a one-way route to the gold mine rather than a two-way route i'll explain that later um and there's a sapling here and here just look for these trees these four trees beautiful trees it's not that hard really it's just around the corner from the uh the wheel thingy and then you go through this and here's a little slope. And here you can just pretty much just walk down. I would recommend crouching though. It's pretty, pretty steep. And there are a few places in the world, not many, but there are a few where there are death barriers where if you do something like this, you just get killed instantly. Uh, so the developers are trying to prevent you from doing this, but there are very few of those. There's one in Ravine and there's another one. Uh, where's the other one? I think it's... Oh, where's the other one? Uh, there is another one. I can't remember where it is. But anyway. But it's fine. And here we are. We're at the bottom. And then if you want to go back out after you've been to the gold mine, you can either climb this rope and go back the way you came. Or you can go through the mines and uh, out the other side, which is what I would recommend that you do. But not everyone does that. Rand Alpha, for example, a streamer, he tends to sometimes go back the way he came. It varies. A lot of birch here, as you can see. Yes, there's, there's four birch saplings just here. This was another one up there. We found maple on the way. So if you need birch or maple, you'll find a bunch on the way. Because we're not really here to loot as canyon as such, but rather get the backpack, we're going to ignore the saplings. Over here, uh, by the end of this river, by the waterfall, there is usually a corpse. And uh, there's not really any loot on this corpse, but I always check. On lower difficulties, you can find stuff here. You can find a revolver and some other things. Uh, an interloop, I don't know if there's anything. I haven't checked in a while. Uh, we got a rifle cartridge. Right. Uh, that seems legit. 
that is definitely going into the memento box our little collection back home because that's not meant to be an interloper <laughs> this is actually the first time i've ever found that on interloper okay <clears throat> well it's getting worse it's getting later we might actually just run a bit because we're going to sleep in the mines anyway and uh let's get this backpack And there's mu not much loot here outside of the mine, and uh, not very much. There's this container here. But there can also be something here, like this crate. And then up here, there is a little cabinet on the floor. And uh, that's about it. There's the gold mine entrance. The cabinet is over here. Uh, nothing. I, I only once ever found something in there. Um, well, I might as well have a quick look around just just to see if there was anything they may have changed or added or something, you know. I don't see anything though. Then we're going to go into the gold mine itself, and this is called the gold mine for two reasons. It is an actual gold mine, one of two. There's also a gold mine in Blackrock, but more importantly, it's a gold mine because it's got fantastic loot. So go inside. Okay. And when you come in here, uh, let's relight this torch. Uh, <clears throat> one thing you want to do, actually, when you come in here, you'll start like this. Stop for a second. And look down. And you'll see matches. These are extremely easy to miss. In fact, I have missed them before. Um, it wasn't until I saw a walkthrough by someone called... Bashrobe on YouTube. You can find his channel. He had an overview of all the different matches, and I knew them. But then I always said that matches are guaranteed in the gold mine. I always found them. But then there was one instance or two where I couldn't find them, and I just told myself that, like, well, I probably just missed it. And sure enough, it's because they were right here. So they're very easy to miss because, you know, you're coming in through here, and you're like, okay, and then you start moving. Ash Canyon does that a lot, you know? They hid this here. Because why would you look down, right? So you miss it. Just like the the little area I showed you earlier, where the bear coat can be, why would you turn around? You'd miss it. The stim also used to be there. So there's like three or more areas. I think there's a couple of other places too in this area where things are behind you. You will never see it unless you go back this way, which most people don't. So this is very well hidden. I'll take it. I'll take it. All right. So that's the matches. If those matches are not there, by the way, they're not guaranteed to be there, but they are guaranteed to be in the mine. If those matches are not there, <clears throat> you'll most likely find them instead here on this chair or around this area uh, or by the workbench where we are uh, getting the backpack. Okay. Jerry can. I definitely want to take that back. Weighs a ton though, but we'll make do somehow. Dog food. Great. Another book. More coal. We're not going to take all this coal with us. We're going to lighten the load a bit, but we'll pick it up for now. Uh, those are found coal, so they will now not come back. But generally speaking, coal that you find on the ground when you go through a mine or a cave, you want to always pick that coal up, even if you're not going to use it. Because what you can do is just when you go through a cave or mine like this, you pick up every piece of coal you can find, and then when you leave the area, if you're carrying too much stuff, just leave the coal, just dump it. Uh, because then, uh, by picking it up, you are resetting the coal timer. So you are resetting, uh, basically, the coal to be picked up, which means that the coal can respawn. So even if you don't use it, you can just drop it somewhere. And then that will be enough. In fact, you could just move the coal you don't have to you don't have to pick it up it will just then trigger a respawn timer and you'll find uh coal next time then you have more coal even if you don't need it and now we enter the other part of the mine and this is where you can find the uh backpack that's on our left over there but I always check over here. So there's these uh, these carts. And I always check behind here. 
just for all, you know, for habits. I have only ever once found something here, so uh, that's why we're here anyway. We're only really looting the mine and stuff for going through here. And over here we come to our prize, what we really want. The backpack. This is what we came here for. And this will permanently increase our carry capacity by 5 kilos. Which is why it's totally worth to come here and pick this up. Be mindful that if you click on this and then choose to leave the backpack. Uh, last time I checked it actually vanishes. So you can't pick it up again later. So don't do that. Just take it. There you go. And now we can carry more stuff. Look at that. We can carry plus 10. And when we have the moose bag, plus 15. Carry a bunch of stuff. Notebook. Candy bar. That I'm going to light a fire. This is the last torch. So I'm just going to light a fire quick. <clears throat> to um, just keep the fire burning. And we can also cook a couple things. And then we'll loot the rest. There's other things to get here. You can even see some of them right now. But it's worth coming here just for that backpack alone. Okay, uh, put, I mean, put this on, sure. And then we have, ooh, combat pants. Nobody needs this anymore. The second of the combat pants, wow. So we have two of them now, are they? Uh, they should be better than this. Yeah, but they are not repaired, but. Then we have the crampons. These crampons, uh, what they basically do is, um, they reduce your chance of sprains. You can walk on ice slightly better, but just marginally so. Uh, and they drain less stamina, but only during rope climbing. And when I say stamina, what I mean is not this eye in the bottom left, but this sprint meter on the bottom right. How much fatigue you lose when you climb a rope doesn't change. It's just your, your sprint. It's a bit confusing because when I say stamina, I usually mean the eye, the fatigue. And I call the other one the sprint meter. But I guess in the game, technically, it's bringing me this stamina and the other is fatigue. Or energy, energy. I guess it's energy. Anyway, let's also pick up this. We got a recycle can. We got a tinder plug. We got gloves. We got accelerant. And then there is some sort of corpse here. I guess not today. And over here, there is a coal bin as well. Or a supply bin, rather. And this can also have stuff. Okay, just rubbish today. And then we might as well do a bit of an inventory and sort some stuff out. We used our last torch. So while this fire is burning, let's sort some stuff out. Let's first get some torches. Get good torches only. That's good. We got a lot of coal and stuff, so we don't need to harvest the... Uh, bad torches. So I'm just gonna grab torches until I get good ones. Some people think that a specific spot will give specific torches and if you find that, I've even seen people call it the sack spot, then you get uh, good torches. As far as I can tell though, it's random. I'm not sure why they called it that. Because as far as I can tell it's random. It's not that hard to test, especially if you're on a console then it's very easy. So you just, for example, here, I'm not going to move the mouse at all. If I click here now, and then the problem now is that I don't think I can actually do anything without moving. But I can do this, grab a torch, right? That was pretty good. And then I can click again. And then would I get the same? I'm not sure if that was exactly the same. That was definitely not the same. That was more. And I didn't move the mouse at all. Okay, one of these was actually good. Uh, so as far as I can tell, it's random. That's all right. I think there was another one. I'm not sure. But as far as I can tell, the torches are random. They're not determined by where you click. Feel free to test it out in case you disagree. Okay. Uh, I got some torches. Let's put on these two and some of this coal. Okay. And then let's have a look. We can probably cook some stuff. Uh, well, only just that, really. Uh, the rest can't really be cooked. We might as well cook this. We can maybe make some birch teas as well. Um, 
Yes. We need to make water as well. And we can craft one of these. There we go. Uh, let's make water. Let's actually make two liters of water. Because we're running out. And that's ready. I'll take that. And here we can make some more birch tea. I'm not going to make the other ones. We'll keep cooking these, really. Because it's only the intervals are too short to really... Okay, we ran out of water. Let's make one liter. And while that's cooking, uh, can we repair something? How much cloth do I have? One. Um... But I can harvest these if I want. I'm going to try and repair this with that one cloth I have. And I failed. Uh, let's have a look at these gloves. Because these gloves are better. They weigh more, but marginally so. But they are better. You can take those. Uh, they're the second best gloves you can get. The wool mittens are better. I'm going to try repairing this again. Uh, not that one, sorry. This one. We failed again. I could harvest one of these things, but I'm not going to do that. So we'll leave that for now. Okay. Do half a liter as well. I think we have enough of these teas anyway, so it's fine. Leave the rest. Uh, let's refuel the best one, which is this one. The other one we won't refuel yet. Jerry cans are great, so I always take them. Because jerry cans way less than the lamp oil things. There's a few things here that we we can come back for. We don't need it right now. Uh, let's eat this first. We need to be below 40 kilos. Uh, we have quite high health, so I might eat low condition stuff and just see what happens. Still no food poisoning. Just the game refuses to give me food poisoning. Sometimes it's just the luck of the draw. Other times you get food poisoning really badly. I had a run where I ate something that was 73% and I got food poisoning. And if it's 75% or higher, you can't get food poisoning from it. But I got it, of course, with 73. Um, we might leave a couple of misc things behind here. Uh, so we can leave, for example, this behind. And leave this behind. The book, uh, <clears throat> we could maybe even read the book. Yeah, we could do that. We could read the book. Um, I want to take most of this with me. Could, could leave one, have a good measure. And <laughs> uh, then we have too much wood, but we'll sort out in the morning. Uh, I think I would rather read the cooking book than the other one. So yeah, let's do this. Let's grab this. Boiled. We're going to put on some more coal. We have so much of it. That's boiled. And what we're going to do now is we're going to put two liters and two liters. And then we're going to read this for two hours. Then you can take this, do the same, and read this for two hours again. There's something to get rid of, you know. Grab this, grab this, then you take another liter and read the last of this book. And now we got rid of half a kilo and we leveled our cooking. And it doesn't matter if it's late in the, uh, in the day. And we have too much stuff. We'll just put this, actually we'll just, just do it like this, because we're going to pick this up another time. So let's just drop, you know, do nine first and go from there. There we are, uh, and then we will eat some more. We can eat uh, this, Let's again go for like low condition stuff, just in case. Have a drink, and then we're going to sleep. <clears throat> we should be warm in here, even when the fire goes out. But it's very tempting to harvest this arrow, isn't it? Because 1% of you are, you know. Don't do that. It's a whole whole shot. This this one percent arrow can kill a bear. Do for ten hours. 
Unless you have very poor clothing when you get there, you shouldn't be cold sleeping here. Should be fine. Okay, 17 days. Uh, and then we will eat some more stuff. Uh, let's eat this. Unlikely to give us food poisoning, but it could. And then also let's eat this. We need one of these. Have a drink. And then we'll sleep for one more hour. And then we're ready to go. Sounds like the weather is okay. A little bit windy. I'm going to use this low the one that's empty, actually. Just to get rid of the uh, fuel in this one. And now we are uh, still a bit heavy and we're going to climb some ropes down. You can billy goat down. But we're not going to do that. We're going to climb down the normal way. Most likely. And I would leave this behind. Uh, in fact, maybe I should. It does weigh a whole kilo, doesn't it? Yeah. We don't have to bring this with us right now. We can just uh, leave this, actually. And let me write a little note. Uh, misc stuff, including um, Storm Lantern in AC Goldmine. I'll be back here. I'll visit every location well, at least twice. And then I have finished this. So that's just firewood. And then we just get rid of some more stuff in our inventory. This is just like... Yeah. Put that there. Okay, so this we'll come back for another time. We don't need it now. We also don't need all this stuff, so I'm going to drop some of these. And we'll pick up some more coal on the way out. So we'll drop that. And now we're good. Because of the technical backpack, we're no longer heavy. It doesn't matter if we were heavy, because you can get down from here without the uh, ropes. You just got to be really careful. And uh, we don't need to do that, at least not this time. But you can do it. We'll pick up probably a couple more pieces of coal here. Uh, if you're playing on Stalker or below, pay close attention here. Because you can sometimes find a rifle laying around in the rubble. So be, be have your eye open. That's happened. So this is the other way out and home. You can... If you want you can go back the way you came but this is a better way the only issue is you could run into a moose blocking you but we'll get to that the more fuel you have in the lantern by the way the more light it gives there's the exit so we're gonna go out here look at our health and everything look how, how good we're doing or rather how well we're doing <clears throat> nice clear day Let's map. Now you can see where we are. I didn't really map much because I already mapped over here. But yeah. So here, this is a one-way exit. When you come out here, you can go down, but you cannot go back up. So once you uh, leave this area, uh, you can't go back up. So just... Uh, oh, uh, corpse. This is new. Hello there. Nothing on him, though. Or her. Or they. And then you head down, and now you are down from here. There's a maple over there, and now this rope leads back down towards the lower levels of Ash Canyon. Very, very easy. And over there, there can be a moose, so be a bit careful with that. Over here, around this corner, there is a rope. This rope here, and this rope, if you climb up this, it takes you to the gold mine. This is the path I mentioned earlier. I said, see that path? That leads to some ropes. That's this rope. So if you climb up this rope, you end up back to the rope anchor where I was at, and then you can go back to the gold mine. Or you can go back to Miner's Folly, just go back to where you came over those bridges. So you can do that if you like. This rope here, and one more, leads back to the lower levels. Now you might ask, why not go here then? This is so much shorter, you just climb three ropes, right? 
while the other one is all the way around, it's a really long route. Well, there's two reasons. One is that going the long way around, which we did, it's actually easy to use the world map, the long way around, like through the mountains, um, that gives you some loot, you know. There's saplings, there's rabbits, you can find a bear coat, you know, a storm lantern for me. So you can find a bit more loot going that way. The other reason is that climbing three ropes, including two ropes that are very long, this rope is long and this other rope is also very long. That's really risky. It's not possible to do it with full stamina or, well, it's possible, but very risky. So if you climb up this rope, then you go to this rope. If you are fully rested by that first rope, you should be able to climb up this rope too. But you probably will not be able to climb up this rope. So that means you need to either use a stim to climb up here. Or you can use your coffee. So you're going to use your valuable coffee to gain some energy back. Or you have to sleep. And regain the stamina. But what if the wind changes and you freeze to death, right? It's really risky. I have done this once only on Interloper. I decided to once on Interloper on day 600 something. I climbed up this rope and then this rope. I ran out of energy uh, and I lit a fire to sleep. The wind changed and blew out the fire. I got two hours of sleep. I lit another fire, slept another three hours. The wind changed. By the way, I slept in increments. Do not ever sleep more than like two or three hours at the most outdoors or you'll die. And then the wind changed again and I ran out of fuel. I had no more fire. I had only a fraction, like one third of my energy. And uh, I had one coffee and I drank that coffee and I just barely, just barely managed to climb up there. And if I hadn't managed that, I could have died. So it's doable. It's perfectly doable, especially if you bring with you enough wood and you sleep somewhere like maybe here, right? Here is pretty safe, like you can have here, you're pretty well protected from more or less all angles. So if you do, if you do that, you'll, you'll probably manage. Just, just promise me that if you do go this route up to the gold mine, just promise me you, you come prepared, okay? Just at minimum have a stim with you and some wood or something so that if you get stuck, you can use the stim to get up there. Or you can climb back down, okay? Because it's it's a way you don't want to die, okay? <clears throat> I don't know why I got so worked up about that. I don't know. It's just that I almost died myself, and I don't. I see people all the time asking, "Oh, there's an easy way to get up. They just climb these three ropes." I see people say that, um, and I'm like, "Well, yeah, but you shouldn't." do that because it's really risky. This rope is always a bit of a nightmare. Like, why is it so difficult to reach? Down we go. Because you don't want to have a survival run where everything going is going fine and what killed you was a rope, right? You don't want that. <clears throat> so always come prepared for these sort of things. Most places that have multiple rope climbs like these I have them spaced out, so there's breaks and places to sleep in between. This one doesn't. So, yes, it can be done. You can climb up the gold mine this way. It's much faster. Three ropes, and then you're at the gold mine. Very, very good, but not easy. Very, very dangerous. But only do it that way if you are prepared. If you have very good gear, if you're lower difficulty and very good gear, you'll probably be all right. If you're playing on Stalker or Interloper or on a Goa, uh, make sure you have a stim. Uh, or coffee, or wood, or all three, and definitely a sleeping bag. And we have a moose. The Ash Canyon moose. We could kill this and harvest it, but we don't really need the moose right now. And the thing is, if I kill this moose, and I could kill it, um, I kind of need to drag the food back to Anglis Den, which would be the base. So I could do that. But I don't really want to do that now. I want to get settled in the other regions first. And if you're afraid of this moose, if it's too close, just take your stone and throw it and you'll scare them away. By the way, here there can be a uh, cache, like a little uh, cartridge cache. You can find some misc stuff in there. 
It's not always there, though. Climb down. If it aggroes me, I will kill it. I could kill it and get another hide, but we only need one moose hide. We're not going to make the moose cloak. At least we're probably not going to make the moose cloak. At least not for a while. Uh, so we don't really need the moose. The meat is great, sure. Gives us lots of food and uh, doesn't give us parasites. So yeah, that's good. Okay, I'm going to check this backpack. Uh, no, I'm going to check it later because this moose is a bit in the way. Hey, moose. Wasn't that scary, huh? Get him running away with his coconut feet. Wait, so cold. Well, how did you get those coconuts? Well, a swan carried it. A swan? Was it an African swan or a European swan? Or what if it was two swans together? <laughs> oh dear. If you know what I'm talking about, you're probably laughing with me. And if you don't, they're like, what is going on? Just, uh, just look up. <laughs> it's so nice to see the does. You still only have deer. I mean, bucks, rather. Okay, so we're actually getting cold, but, uh, marginally so. We could actually... Maybe light a fire in a second... Let's light a fire <clears throat> a little bit later. We're going to go up here towards the birch forest and grab the birch that's there. And then we'll make a fire up there. There's a cave here as well on the right. Another easy to miss cave. It's up there. Uh, I think it's called stone something. Or maybe it's just called stone cave. I'm not sure. Something stone. <laughs> And um, you can you can stay there. It's another place that's easy to miss. All right, let's get out of Ash Canyon. We'll come back here for sure. I think it's a great region. We're going to loot all the stuff and bring it back to our main base and create a collection of things. Uh, and just loot everything, explore everything, and just deal with, well, everything. But uh, we don't need it at the moment. At the moment, I want to loot the high-end areas. Get the backpack. We'll go to Summit as well. And a couple other things. And we're going to head home. We're going to make the moose satchel. We're going to craft some more gear. Uh, get stronger. And we're going to start conquering Mystery Lake. And just set up a very strong base there. And then we'll move on to another region. And another region. And another region. Until we've done them all. And then when we've done all that. We can do Cartographer. And we can do cans if you really want to. I'm not really that bothered about the cans, if I'm honest, though. Um, we can search every nook and cranny of the world. Even when you have looted the entire world and even mapped the entire world, you definitely want to go and check the entire world again because you are going to find smaller things that you missed. And here we have some oversized bark. How about that? Oversized bark. I've seen bigger, though. I have found bigger myself, really big ones, but the biggest ones I've ever seen was by a phenon, which is so big you can actually walk under it. If you want to see that yourself, uh, go on my channel and search for uh, Twitch Highlights. And you'll f I think the third one, Twitch Highlights 3, are highlights from the Long Dark community and the opening clip is by a phenon. And it shows him going under this um, massive birch bark. They were huge when Ash Canyon came out. Ash Canyon came out in, I think, December 2020 or something thereabouts. And in the beginning, the, the birch barks were quite buggy. And you can get these massive things. They were huge. Then they patched it and it got better. <laughs> but you can still find big ones like the ones I found now. Very rarely I'll find even bigger ones, but usually not. Now, there are places to loot that I walked past now. There are uh, a few plateaus and hidden areas. Ash Canyon, there's a lot of stuff to explore here. There's all sorts of caves and hidden nooks and crannies. and uh, There's all sorts of things to find and explore. So we're going to come back here and we're definitely going to spend a lot of time here. 
because this is a great area. It's a very good area to learn. Sure, it's at the end of the world. You, you, once you get to it, it's not going to go anywhere. It's as far away from the far territory as you can get, pretty much. But it is a great region. Uh, there is so much to discover uh, and learn. So stay with me, my friends. We'll come back here at some point in the future. We'll come back here. We'll put this on our list. We don't have to conquer every region, like, in order or anything. In fact, you can let me know. Maybe not necessarily in this video, but in the future. I guess you could let me know now, too, but... After we have settled Mystery Lake and kind of conquered Mystery Lake, mapped it out, looted everything, crafted our stuff, what area would you like me to go to next? Would you like me to go to Coastal Highway, Pleasant Valley, Crash Canyon, to the Far Range? Wherever you think. And we'll see what we do. Alright, so here we are. This is where we came out. So we've been here before. And we're going to go here. And we're going to sleep in here as well. Uh, tonight. So because we're going to sleep in here. <clears throat> I'm actually going to run through this cave. Because it will make me more tired. And then I can sleep. I'm going to check where I looted earlier one more time. Because I did kind of rush it last time, so I'm just going to see if there was anything that I missed. Just in case I was too rushed and I missed something. I mean, I did miss, or miss, I just didn't pick up the wood, but is there anything else? Not that I can see. What about in here? With the unlucky... Insulated boots survivor. Is there anything in here? Oh, there's a wolf. Wait a minute, was this wolf here before? Was this survivor was here before? I don't remember seeing this wolf. Or is my mind playing tricks on me? Or have we eaten from the insane root? That drives the reason prisoner. Hmm. Well, we don't need the wolf either way. Just some casual Macbeth quoting there. I don't remember seeing that wolf at all, but I did rush it, so maybe it was always there and I just didn't see it. Weird. Well, we don't really need it anyway, so. I could grab it, I guess, but we don't need it. And I'm just running, not because I need to, but I want to get more tired so I can sleep in here until morning. Uh, it's actually this way over there, I believe. I'm going to check over here. Yeah, we got some coal. Yes. We could sleep in the day clearing. But the deer clearing has a cave, and that counts as outdoors, so we won't get cabin fever, but because it's colder, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do it here. Here we are. This is the route back to Timberwolf Mountain. So if you're not 100% clear on where we are, this is exactly where we came from earlier. And here we are in Timberwolf Mountain. There's the deer clearing over there. And Summit is up there. And that's where we're going to go next. Because we have a hacksaw, you see. But we can open the containers. If you don't find a hacksaw up there. Because in the past you could find a hacksaw up there. Sometimes. Not sure if that's still the case. But you could find one hacksaw up there. Uh, but we're not going to do that uh, right now. We are going to sleep. But we are going to go up there and loot the summit and then drag it all down uh, to the mountainous hut. Before we do that though, um, it's still light, so while waiting I'm going to read this for an hour, maybe two. I think we can read this for two hours, probably. Uh, so let's do that. I don't think we can read three hours though. <clears throat> it takes ten hours to read this book. 
Uh, we can maybe read one more hour. Let's see. Oh, so close. So close. Okay. Let's see. We can also then do this. Just to kill some time. Craft this. We can't do repairs or anything. There's no point doing that. And then uh, I think that's it. We got some good torches here. Uh, we could harvest this and repair that, but we're not going to do that. Also, we need light anyway. Okay, we are good. We're, we're a little bit heavy, but after sleeping and eating and stuff, we'll be right. So let's uh, let's get ready for this sleep then. Uh, we will eat this. And this. And then we'll eat this. And then the dog food. I'm amazed that I have not gotten food poisoning yet. I've been really, really lucky with that. But the way you should do it is exactly how I've been doing it. You should eat the stuff that has low condition that can give you food poisoning when you're in a position to sleep safely and you already have high health. Because then you need to sleep for 10 hours. Well, you need to cure it first with this or this. And then you just sleep for 10 hours. So you won't heal. In fact, you'll lose a very small amount of health, provided you've taken one of these two. And then you uh, are cured. So it doesn't really cost you anything. But if you eat it when you're low health or anything like that, then it's it will have a large impact on your game. All right, so let's sleep for 10 hours. There we go. Let's eat this. More or less all the food we have, but I'm not worried. We'll find food at the summit or we'll find some food on the way. It's fine. Oh, let me just pick up this bedroll. Make sure that we have everything on the floor. Yes. Then we're going to head out. And then back in just to save the game. And we're still full health. We're not heavy yet. It's cold outside, but not that cold. And we'll go back inside. The game should save. And then we'll stand here. And that's it. Thank you, fellow survivors. We're going to leave this episode here. We got the backpack now. What day are we on now? So we're 19. I think we killed the moose here, didn't we? Or like, yeah, somewhere. So it's been curing for about three days. Uh, we after summit and stuff it'll probably have killed for five days maybe we'll see um so yeah so we got uh we got dash canyon we got the the uh, backpack so we can carry more stuff perfect time to go to the summit and then after that we'll take some stuff down the mountainous hut grab the moose hide as well and make our way home and then we're going to become a powerhouse of a survivor crafting a bunch of stuff at home could do it here, I suppose. We don't really need to. But yeah, that's it for this episode. I'll see you next time, survivors. Bye-bye.